Hey, what's up everybody? It's Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of the Credit Repair Shop.com. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about the disadvantages that you have with bad credit. I wanna make this clear to people because for some reason, some people think that having bad credit and just moving through day to day is okay, that I'm just gonna to have to deal with it, that there's nothing that I can do about it. Well, let me point out some things that you need to become more aware of and I think that when you become more aware of these things that um, that are making you at a disadvantage, that are having you at a disadvantage with living with bad credit, that you're going to be wanting to do something about it. Uh, outwardly, I think that you know consciously or maybe subconsciously, but maybe a lot of people don't know what they can do about it. And we, you know, we always talk about that here with the credit, credit repair shop. But I think that people mainly do what they feel like doing. And so when you when you kind of waken people up to, okay, you're going through this and this is the reason why and why you need to take, take uh, action on fixing that, I think that you start to uh, waken people up on the inside and they're like, hey, I am tired of going through that or I am experiencing that and I'm tired of feeling that way dealing with uh, companies or dealing with lenders or whatever. So let me kind of turn my screen a little bit this way. Uh, I think that it'll be a little bit better. Hold on. That's better there. Okay. Uh, still working on that lighting, but we'll, we'll deal with that. Also the sun, I noticed that when the time changed, the sun kind of comes through one of my windows over here. And I do have, uh, uh, blinds that's over there but it still would make some type of uh like it's still you know going through it with the way that the camera works it still pulls through for some reason so let's talk about the the uh bad credit disadvantages now i'm going to walk you through them. i'm going to talk a little bit about them to kind of waking you up to why you need to do some things about it but the number well and these are not numbered in importance it, it, it's not numbered in importance I just went through from what I see with clients and, and the, the uh, how they express themselves when they have bad credit. And these are some of the things that they would say, obviously there's more, and this is not in a priority list, but we have here with number one here, you're too big of a risk for mainstream lenders. I talk about this a lot. When you have bad credit, the lenders who will give you the prime rates, the lenders who will give you 0% interest on stuff, they don't want to touch you. And, and, and in a way, it sounds crazy. It's like the P, like the way it, it, it's, it, the reward for having good credit is that you get to utilize and get money at a cheaper rate. The, the disadvantage for having bad credit is that even though you can't afford to borrow the money, or you can uh, barely afford to borrow the money, it's gonna cost you a lot more money to be able to get that. And what we see is that people end up going to subprime lenders and they end up paying a lot more for a loan to buy the same thing that someone with good credit was buying. Like it's, it's you know, some people don't, for some reason they don't really look at it that way because they're more focused on that material item that they're getting but they don't realize that you could have got that same item for a lot less money if you're financing it, if you simply just had taken care and repaired your credit. Like it is very important. So uh, the next thing is here, and I just talked about it a little bit, is that you will pay more for loans, like literally pay more for loans. Like I'll give you an example for buying a house. I've seen people who were paying for a $150,000 house. The amount of money that they're paying on that loan, on that mortgage, is more than what someone is paying for a $350,000 home. I know that that might sound crazy, but you can look at the news reports, you can look at all of the different subprime lenders that were sweeping all across the country and where people were either losing their homes because they had that adjustable interest rate, or they just got flat up into a subprime loan to where they, $150,000, they're paying like $2,500 to $3,000 a month on a $150,000 property. And then you have someone with a 
$50,000 property or $300,000 property and they're paying less than what that person is paying. And it's solely because that person, the consequences, disadvantages of having bad credit. Another one here is real big. I just went through this uh, with, uh, my, with, with my insurance. We just renewed our insurance. And when they run, run the credit on uh, getting the insurance, we're paying low. I mean, if you watch my videos, you know that a few years ago that my wife had to have uh, surgery where she had to get uh, a transplant of both of her lungs. The surgery for one day, the surgery for one day, it was, and the surgery took like about, I think 12 hours for the surgery. And we had, uh, you know, they, they give you that breakdown of the insurance, uh, what the insurance paid and what, what it cost you and how much you're gonna pay, but you just know the cost of everything. That's what's in the rules. For that one 12 hour period, it was over $1 million for my wife's transplant. Now, for insurance, what we pay for just two people, and this might be high to some people, uh, but I, it's a lot lower when you base it on what we have to, uh, you know, how much insurance we use on a yearly basis, pay $1,300 per month for the two of us. Now, my wife is on, uh, she takes 40 pills to control her system after the, uh, and that's every day uh, from the transplant, 40 pills. We added up how much that would be. It would be something like $8,000 per month. Uh, the surgery, I said, was over a million, and there's different things that she has to do uh, throughout the year to, to just make sure that everything is working right. If we did not have good credit, our rate on that insurance could be almost $3,000 a month, $3,000 a month. We don't qualify for any of the uh, uh, plans, uh, you know, where they, uh, I forget what they, subsidies, we don't qualify for any of that type of stuff. Uh, and that's a good thing, don't hear me wrong on that. Uh, but we don't qualify for any of that. So we were solely based on what we could afford for insurance the way that we wanted it. And also looking at our credit rating because they're gonna base that on, on your credit rating. Some of them don't, don't, I'm not saying all of them do, but it just depends on what type of insurance you need. The uh, next thing uh, is missing out on career and business opportunities. People do, you know, even though they did change the laws, they put it into the law that uh, only certain uh, uh, employers can look at your credit and make a determination if they want to deal with you. And it's mainly if you're in the financial services industry, but you know, but you know that uh, this is something that was not written in the, uh, in the uh, new law that had passed it. And I think the law is over a couple of years ago. Uh, something that wasn't wrote in there was that if you're already working at that job and they needed to say, they're like, hey, we have Jim over here and we have uh, James over here and we, want, we need to promote somebody. Basically everything is the same. They have very good work ethic. They both on time. They both uh, good family men, you know, they don't get into trouble. Uh, how can we see which one? Education is the same. Everything's the same. Time on job is the same. How can we break this tie? Well, if we look at it, when companies promote people, they give them more responsibility and that more responsibility goes into more financial. It can, even though you don't touch money, it is in a sense, and I'm a business owner, when I give an employee responsibilities, that's taken away from responsibilities that I would have had to do. And I consider everything that I do for my business a financial responsibility. Like if one piece of the puzzle doesn't work, it affects another and that affects the finances of the business. So the one way that they would break that tie, they say, okay, well, let's look at their credit reports. Not to give them a loan, but to see how they're leading their personal life. Because if you, if you lead your personal life in a manner financially and you're having all of this disruption maybe you're holding it together at your job but you have disruptions at home that can end up leaking into your career and they can say well you have financial issues 
this other individual doesn't, and we, uh, we they won't say it to you, but they'll say, you know, they'll be like, hey, we're gonna get that promotion to, to uh, the other individual, to James, you know. Uh, business opportunity. Uh, th there's been business opportunities that I've came across where they don't even want your money. They just want to see how you lead your financial life because it's very important because they don't want to get into, uh, you know, a business arrangement and they're like, hey, you uh, put money into the deal, but you're so strapped for cash. I can see with your credit reports that, man, or you're using the last of your money or the way that you're living paycheck to paycheck, you're spending so much money on a monthly basis, even though we wanna do this deal with you, we're, we're not gonna do this deal with you because, I mean, it just doesn't look good. I mean, you gotta, you know, when you invest in stuff, it could take, you know, years to come back around to you. And if you're just living paycheck to paycheck, even though you have, uh, uh, you know, good credit, uh, you know, even though you might have some dings on your credit, we still can't, uh, and you and you gave cash, so you've, you've been able to save some cash and put some cash into the deal, but because of the way your credit looks and because of the way that you're managing your financial life, uh, we, we're not gonna do the deal with you. Now, if your credit is, is messed up, then they're really not gonna do the deal with you. I just gave you a scenario where you can have good credit and they can look at it and say, well, we don't think that you're good for this opportunity, not because you're not a good person, because the way you're managing your finances, uh, even you're living like paycheck to paycheck, it's just not gonna work. Next thing, and we hear a lot of this too, like a lot of people call our uh, the credit repair shop and they'll say, hey, uh, I'm having, I need to fix my credit so I can either buy a house or I want to uh, rent an apartment, and the way it is right now, I can't rent it. And so you have to like hit those types of things right at the head. Like when I look at this, and people say, "Well, if uh, my credit is screwed up, and I have a an eviction on my credit report, how can I even get that fixed?" Well, the way to get it fixed is to go straight line, which is to contact that uh, management company or that. Uh, uh, landlord that if there was just an individual property landlord and work out a deal and get that resolved and get and then work on getting that information removed from your credit reports that's that's just the way to do it and it takes work because number one you got to get the management company and you got to get the individual in the right mindset to even want to make a move on that and you got to also get yourself in the right mindset to make a move on that next thing is tough time setting up utilities like uh, some people, when they move from place to place, even though they maybe had utilities at another place or try to go set up utilities at another place and they'll say, you got to put a deposit, put a deposit of money that you could use for other things. I've seen this even with cell phone companies where they ran an individual's credit and they're like, hey, you got to put a deposit for getting service with us. That, like that's crazy that that type of stuff is happening. And you see that happen a lot with utilities. With, when uh, I have one, two, three, seven, no, five utility bills, five utility bills for different properties, uh, my, my own residence and then commercial properties that I have and other businesses that I have that I have to pay utilities on. And even though they, you know, open it up in the business's name, they still want to know who is that owner that's opening up that account. And just think you, you you need to you utilize that money for other stuff you want to have it sit in some account at some other place that you're not even getting interest at and just because you have bad credit you can't even turn uh switch the light zone in your area or you have to do what they're doing in texas where they're doing pre they got prepaid electric in texas prepaid electric in in uh in arizona my daughter was telling me about that like that's I like that's crazy. You, 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 people are paying money out of their pocket on a daily basis to keep their utilities on simply because they have bad credit and they can't qualify to get utilities. See, what a lot of people just don't get in their mind, and I know you're not one of them because you're here watching this video. You want to work on this stuff. Is that they just don't understand that having that bad credit, what it does to them is that it just puts them into a situation like a spiral where they just can't 
get their head out of that water. They're just all the time spiraling down, trying to keep their head above water. You just can't stay that way. Let's go into some of the other uh, stuff here. Uh, number eight, access to, to money is limited when and a good example of this one is like you can't get you can't get a credit card. Say say for instance you want to just put yourself on a budget. Like I do this uh, for my businesses. It's like I want to pay. Uh, uh, I don't want to just take the cash out of the business on uh, when I'm buying something. I want to keep the cash in the business. I want to put that that uh, those uh, charges on a credit card. And then I'll pay all of that at the, you know, when that statement comes through. That means that I'm able to utilize that money for other things. I'm either able to uh, keep uh, capital in the business for anything that might come up. And then by the end of that time, on that statement date, because I know that I have the business cycle that's going on with finances, I'm able to just take care of that. Even if you're just running your day-to-day -day life for yourself certain things that you might need to do like if you have an automobile that breaks down you don't want to have to go to a payday loan place to take care of it you could put that on your your credit card maybe get points back on that where you actually pay less than what you paid to have the car fixed and then when it came rolling around the time to uh for your statement date to pay off what you did, you know, the, the repairs on the car, you're able to take care of that and you didn't end up having to go to some subprime place to get your car, the money to get your car repaired so you're able to, to go to work, so you're able to take care of your family. So th this is a big deal. Access, your access to money is limited. There's a lot of different ways and opportunities that are out there for uh, getting money if your credit is taken care of next thing is hard time building wealth and i just talked about it with business opportunities like some some opportunity could come your way or just it's hard for you to be able to build wealth because you can't save money because you're paying more for the same things that other people are paying for let's just say that you're making you know five thousand dollars a month you make five thousand dollars a month and your bills are $5,000 a month. For everything for you to maintain your household is $5,000 a month. If you had good credit, I'm pretty sure that when you look at the percentages that you're paying on the loans that you have, on the credit cards that you have, on your, the, the mortgage, or even for you being able to, to rent, you might even be paying a higher price because of your credit that uh, you could probably be cutting that down to $4,000 or even $3,000. I just gave you the example on the mortgage. Like that is, when I look at people's financial uh, information, I see stuff like that and I'm like, man, if you just had good credit, if you just had good credit, you'd be able to refinance and you'd be saving yourself like $2,000 a month. And then you could be putting like a thousand, let's just go low because people don't, you know, when you start throwing out high numbers of people to put away per month, they start running from that. Let's just say you put a hundred dollars a month. That you just get started because my, my rule is this, this is the way that I started saving money is that you start with a little bit so you can train yourself to put away money. You want to train your mind. You want to train yourself that you feel good not spending all of your money. And then you'll see that you'll be able to add, be able to keep increasing that. But first, just start with a little bit of money. Next thing is you're passing that on, and this could be like the number one. You're passing on poor habits to your children. See, we have this, uh, this thing where we think our children listen more to what we say no, it's the it's the the opposite. The children do what they see us do, and if they see us managing our money bad, if they see that you can't keep the lights on, if they hear the calls coming in from debt collectors or people knocking on the door saying that you know you have this uh, summons to court, they end up thinking that that is normal, and you don't want to make your children think that this is normal for for uh, you. For them to have bad credit, like my parents struggle through it, I'm going to just struggle through it. It becomes something that's normal. And using words like struggle 
as something that is normal. And this, I mean, hey, if you're still watching this video, you know what I'm talking about. Because I went through it with my family. I'm pretty sure that some of you are probably going through it or remember from, from your parents. You cannot let them see you struggling. Now, you'll hear, I, I hear this a lot where, like, people are talking about when they were kids and they were like, we didn't know we were poor. You know you were poor. You know you were poor because unless you just did not have a brain, like how can you say that you didn't know you were poor and then when you got to be an adult, you knew you were poor? It, it's not that you didn't know you were poor. You listened and you were very consciously aware of what your parents were, were able to do and not able to do. And you're not going to walk up to your parent and say, why don't you go get a better job? Why don't you start a business? Why don't you do that? You know, I got slapped once. Well, not slapped, but I got put in my place by my mother one time. I went up to her because when I was thinking, you know, I'm in my, my teens and I'm like looking at all these successful people. And I was uh, actually a part of a network marketing company at the age of 15 where I was making, you know, pretty good money uh, and learning from these uh, older people about how to be in business, how to, you know, conduct yourself, how to dress, all of that stuff. Uh, and I had, you know, been around them and I went to my mom and I said, well, why didn't you make a business and do all of this type of stuff? And my mom put me, she was like, hey, I was taking care of you. We were taking care of you. Things were a lot different at that time in the 70s. We just wanted to make sure that you were okay. Now, not to say that they couldn't have done it, but I could see her point on that, where she was like, hey, uh, it, that's how it was. And so that me meant that me consciously, as a young, uh, young man at that time, as a kid at that time, was consciously aware, but a lot of kids, a lot of people, when they say that, you know, they're being interviewed and they talk about that, you see that a lot with sports people or musicians, where they'll just say, well, hey, I did, well, with musicians, it depends on which type. Rappers will tell you straight up, hey, we didn't have nothing, but, you know, some sports people will, you know, they'll express it in a different way. Uh, but they will say, didn't know that they were poor, but, what it what they really meant is that they didn't say anything about being poor. They just, you know, move forward with life. So now what are we going to do about this? Like what for you that are still here watching this video, what are you going to do? What are the steps that you're going to take to change the trajectory of where your life is going right now? Because it starts with credit. I don't care what other people are telling you. I don't care if you're listening to Dave Ramsey or watching Dave Ramsey. Uh, he's a good man. He has good information, but I'm telling you, you, we live in a credit society and until credit is not important, which it's not going to happen because this is the way that everything is based. You need to work on fixing your credit and no one, not me, no one can tell you how fast your credit is going to be repaired. You just need to be willing to dive in if you do it yourself or if you have a company like mine do it for you, you need to be dived, just dialed in and be willing to go through the process because it's going to be a process. As a matter of fact, if, if the longer you live with bad credit, the longer it's going to take to get your credit repaired. I can guarantee that for you. Uh, specific information on your credit might be, you know, you could clear your credit up uh, pretty quick, depending on what type of creditors you have, depending on how long the information has been on there. But I can tell you that on in your mind, the longer you go, the longer you go with living with bad credit, the longer it's going to take to fix your bad credit. Trust me, I've been doing this for a long time. So now what I want you to do is I want you to like this video. I want you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that. If you need help with your credit, please visit us at thecreditrepairshop.com. Watch the video, What Makes Us Different. So you can see my eight-point validation process, my two-phase settlement process for repairing credit. That's the way that we do it. If you need your credit reports and scores, 
go to the website, your the number three scores.com to grab your credit reports. I'd really appreciate that. And also you can share those reports with my staff and we can tell you what we see and how we would go about helping you repair your credit. This is gonna have your TransUnion, Equifax, Experian credit reports and all three scores. And it's gonna have a breakdown of everything that the creditor or debt collector or slash furnisher put in your credit file. The, the free places that you can get your reports from, they don't show that information. This has all that information. If you have debt collectors coming after you, grab my three pack of letters, statute of limitations letter, debt validation letter, cease and desist collection activities letter to help you deal with debt collectors. Thank you for your time. This is Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of the creditrepairshop.com.